So greetings from Pennsylvania once again, and it's time for another video in the Union Canal series. It's been a little while. Of course, we're back here at the Union Canal Tunnel Park. We're at the north end. Of course, just back there is where the tunnel was. That was a, that was a fun episode to make. You know, got got some video of us going through the tunnel. Got that one that one uh, canal boat tour through the tunnel. That was pretty awesome. But yeah, but this is where we ended the last video. Just up here, it's a little bridge that goes across the canal. This is where we ended up here. And beyond here is private property. Of course, you know what that means. Yeah, but here's another view of the canal. We ended, like I said, we ended that last video just up at that bridge. But here's looking back. Or the, the, the tunnel was just around that bend way back there. Yeah, it's a beautiful morning. This is October 22nd, Saturday morning. And just a little bit of a recap. We are here at what's called summit level. The tunnel is part of that, where you know the canal reaches its highest height, and then we start dropping back down towards the Sotara Creek. We, in all the previous episodes, we were coming up, coming up from the Topahawken Creek, you know, which connects the Schuylkill River way back that way, and we were following all those locks because we were gaining elevation. Now, let me switch hands here. Now we're going to start descending. Towards the towards the Swatara Creek and eventually the Susquehanna River. So what, what that also means is our is that our lock numbers, the sequencing is going to start over again. When we did the eastern half, we did locks 54 east to lock one east. Now the numbers are going to start over again. Just up here on the property up here is lock one again, but it's lock one west, and we start descending. I think oh, there's I think there's 30 some locks on the west end. It's not quite as many. So that's so I know some people might get confused. Weren't, didn't we do all these locks already? No, these we're now doing the west, the west end of the canal. Let's just walk down this way a little bit. And this video is going to be filmed a little bit out of sequence. Of course, if I didn't say anything, you might not notice. But I already filmed the property over there. It's one of the properties I got permission for. I already saw lock number one, which is like an amazing condition. So, but I had to meet. Uh, the property owner at nine. I only got here at nine. But yeah, there's a view up. There's the old canal. Like I said, once again, the tunnel is back that way. Yeah, and last time we were here, we looked across this fence to land over there. But now I know it's back there. Lock number one. So the plan for this episode is to cover locks one through eight. That's one west through eight west. Remember, we're descending again and we're starting over again with the numbers. I have two, two property permissions for this section. Like I said, I already did the one for lock one. And I think locks six and seven are on the other property. Lock number eight, we can see from the road. When I did that one video some time ago with my friend John, the one lock we were looking at was lock number eight, I realized later. Some of the other ones, we might be able to see lock two from the rail trail back. That's back that way. We'll see. I, I talked with the one property owner the other east that I might be able to see it from there. Three, four, and five. I don't know. We'll see. I might be able to see five from the road. We'll see what happens. But like I said, I only have two property permissions. And unlike some, when we were filming along the Topahawken Creek, you know, the way I did that was when I didn't have permission, I would walk into Topahawken Creek. Well, there. I can't. I can't really do that here anymore. There's no creek that runs alongside the canal at this point through this section here. That'll change when we get back. When we get down to the Sotara Creek. But anyway, I'm yapping enough for now. We'll jump to the segment where I film lock number one, which, by the way, is in awesome condition. All right. All right. So over there is where we started this video. Just around the bend there is the tunnel. Because here's the canal right here. Now we're on this side of the fence. And I just talked with Harvey up there. He's the guy that owns this farm. One of the permissions I got. Pretty cool dude. But here's, there's a pond right here, but right here is where the canal would have ran. And we're gonna walk along the old towpath here. Got some geese out there. Beautiful morning. 
Yeah, so it was pretty cool talking with Harvey for a little bit. He took me back here first, showed me the lock, and showed me some other cool stuff back here on his farm. So, he's one of the old timers, I call him. Out there's the geese. Those are not the those are not the uh, wild Canadian geese. I think they start their name starts with a T. I think. There they are, chilling out in the water out there. Yeah, and his uh, his house up there was built in right up there. It is it was built in 1869, so it was here when the canal was running through here. Actually, now that I think about it, the towpath wouldn't be on this side. The towpath would be on the other side over there. We'll be walking on it later. Let's we'll walk back here. But lock number one back here is in amazing condition, actually. It's one of the best. It's one of the best we'll see in this series. I think every stone is still there. What's cool talking with Harvey, since he lives here, he also gave me some information about the others. Um, I was hoping to be able to see like lock number two, and he th I think I should be able to see it from the rail trail. We'll see. Some of the things he told me I should look for back here too. Yeah, here's this old bridge. It's kind of you know you learn a lot from some of these landowners. It's kind of sad because he talked about how they used to have picnics back here and stuff, but. He's had some, there's been some recent uh, family tragedies. I won't get into that, it's personal stuff, but yeah, now they don't really make it back here as much. But right here is lock number one. And it is amazing condition. A little bit overgrown, but you can still see it clearly. walk up here there's a section up here that's really clear to see this right here is the towpath that we're walking on right here now yeah every stone whoops ground hole there might be a few missing at the very top there the top row but for the most part everything's here Up here, you get a really good view of it. See the curve in the ends here. Beautiful stonework. This right here is where the doors were. You can still see some of the iron pegs in there. Beautiful shot. Trying to get some photos here. But beautiful. Yeah, so I definitely think this is one of the best locks we've seen, actually, just in its condition. No restoration work's been done to this one either, it's just in this beautiful condition. Look it up back through. Right, but then the canal continues on this way. We're gonna walk back here a little bit. Harvey showed me something back here. Like right here is, this is the towpath trail. I keep stepping on, there's a, a lot of walnuts here on this trail. I keep stepping on my feet. They're rolling under my feet. It's a beautiful walk just back here too. Once again, you got the canal down here. You can see the ditch. I think we need to go up this way. Yeah, these are these are where I'm stepping on all these walnuts. <laughs> I think some years ago he found an old well up here. It looks like an old house site. And I think we we're talking with him. I was talking with him a little bit about it. I think I might know what it could be. 
in right here. There's an old well here. Check that out. He started year, a couple years ago. He started digging it out. But yeah, there's some old bricks up here and stuff. So I'm wondering if this was one of the old, where well, the old lock house was. Because, of course, it showed you lock number one, and lock number two is just up that way. But like I mentioned in other videos, these locks would have a lock house right next to them too, where the lock tender would live. He's the guy that, as the canal boats were coming through, he'd open and close the doors on the locks for the for the canal boats. So if there's multiple locks in an area, there'd be one lock house or several locks. I'm wondering if that's possibly what this is, maybe. I'm not saying that is what it is, but it's a possibility. All right, but his property ends just up this way a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna stop here. Just up that way is the Lebanon Valley Rail Trail, the rails to trails. We'll be on that a little bit later. Not sure when we'll get there today, but at some point I'll be in this video. In this video. So we'll try to get some glimpses of See if, we, see if we can see lock number two from the canal. Maybe some other features of it as well. We're gonna head back to back to the farm here. And just as an aside, you know, I got permission to be here from the landowner. You know, me being here doesn't give you or anybody else permission to just come out here on their own and check things out. If you wanna look at lock number one yourself, you need to get permission from the landowner. And then once again, here's lock number one. I wish I could get down. Maybe we'll try to get down this way. It looks like we could squeeze down in through here. Get a closer look at it. The stone work at least here. Yeah. Go right next to it. Look down through it here maybe. There we go. There's a view down through it. That's pretty cool. There's the end of it there. But alrighty, then that'll be it for lock number one. I'm not sure how I'm gonna film next. Like I mentioned earlier, this this video is gonna be kind of all out of sequence just because I have some different property owners I need to meet at different times and things like that. So alright, but uh we'll get on to the next place wherever that's gonna be. <laughs> Alright, so we are now on the Lebanon Valley Rail Trail. Just over that way is the Union Canal Tunnel Park, but the south side of it. Earlier we were at the north side. So we're gonna walk up here a ways. I'm hoping to be able to, well, at some point, this rail trail does cross over the former canal. And I'm thinking we might be able to get some glimpses of lock number two, which should be on our right side. Maybe lock number three will be on our left side, we'll see. I was told that there's maybe some other things that we can see too from Harvey, the one property owner we met earlier. So we'll go for a walk here. I got some time to kill before I meet the next property owner, which he won't be home till 1230. So and it's maybe just barely 11 right now. So all right, let's, let's see if there is a sea up this way. It's turning out to be an absolutely beautiful day. Like I said, this is the Lebanon Valley Rail Trail. Yeah, at some point in the future, maybe next year, we'll do a series on some rail trails. Not like, not like I got that bike. No, I haven't used the bike that much this summer. That's because I've already have a number of series, ongoing series that I've been doing. I got the bike in preparation for like other series. Potentially doing ones like this, like following a rail trail. Instead of hiking it, you know, biking it. We've got a little tunnel ahead to walk through. Up above there's that's Tunnel Hill Road up above. But this is the same ridge or hill that we're going through. You can see there's a kind of a cut through the hill here. But just to the east is the Union Canal Tunnel. This is the same ridge that the canal tunnel had to that they had to you know burrow through. Is this old railroad tunnel? It looks like it's been refurbished for the rail trail. Yeah, just uh just over that way is the Union Canal Tunnel. So two tunnels to the same ridge. But this one looks way too, way too modern. <laughs> All right, no beautiful stonework or anything. All right, but hopefully a little ways up past this tunnel, 
we'll cross where the canal went. All right, so we have arrived in the area. Just check my phone, the maps. I noticed there's water on the side here and on the other side. Um, I think the actual canal might just be up a little bit further up that way. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what we can see from up here. Oh, you know what? I see stonework back there. We can zoom you in a little bit. That is lock number two back there. Wow, I don't think there's any way we're gonna get to it. That is private property there back there too. But we can definitely see it. Looks like it's in decent shape back there. Definitely see the stonework. Right, but that might be as close as we get. Yeah, this is definitely the yeah. This is definitely the canal right here. Down there quite a ways. But yeah, definitely. Ah, oh, looks beautiful back there. <laughs> Can I see it through the trees there? There it is. Kind of see the other side over there too through the branches. I'm gonna try and get a better viewpoint of that, but for now that's what we got. Yeah, so unfortunately I did encounter some posted signs up there. I thought maybe we could go come down in, but there's it's posted. So oh, anyway, you guys know how much I want to get down there. You can see it once again through the trees. Beautiful stonework, but it's as close as we're gonna be able to get. All right. But at least we get to see at least a glimpse of it back that way. I would love to get up to it. Looks like most of the stonework is in place there, but I didn't I didn't get back. I didn't hear anything back from these property owners, so it is what it is. And looking over this way, let me turn you around. Looking over this way, it's just a wall of green, but out that way would be locks 3 and 4. Yeah, I can't see anything through there. Uh, let me Ah, uh, let me walk up this way a little bit. Yes, yeah, so that's just going to have to remain a mystery for now. I can see water down. I'll be less the canal going through there. But, uh, yeah, so lock three would just be up here, and then further up is lock four. Lock five, we might be able to get a glimpse of later today. We'll see. But I think, I think that's it. There she is. Lock number two. Back in the woods back there again. All right, well, you know, you take what you can get sometimes. This area over here just looks horribly overgrown. There's a pond back there, too. All right. Pretty big pond back in there, so maybe there's really... Anyway, I feel like I want to... All right, I got to let go. I think somewhere around here, too, there's a, a big pipe. Yeah, what does that have to do with the canal? Let me get to that in a moment. Let me see if I can find it first. Yeah, I was told that back near there somewhere there's a big pipe that goes underneath the rail bed there. I mean, there's pipes where the canal, the water that's in the canal goes underneath. That pipe was used, I think I mentioned in one of the previous videos that up at the summit level area, they had tons of problems with a leakage on the canal. The bedrock was limestone up there, so it was very porous. So a lot of the water would just leak through the rock. So they'd pump water up from a place down that way called Union Waterworks which is where the canal is headed to. Probably in our second episode, in, in, not the second, but in the next episode I do, we'll be down at Union Waterworks. So they would pump water up from there to the sections of the canal up here, this way, to summit level. And supposedly, you can see some of the remains of that pipe. But anyway, I didn't really see anything. It's very overgrown, and like I said, it's on private property too, so. All right, but hey, we got a glimpse of lock number two. We'll, we'll, we'll have to take it. <laughs> Best we can do. And now we're just heading back along the rail trail back to the Union Canal Tunnel Park. I think that other tunnel is just up here too. But anyway, I'm gonna, not sure what I'm gonna do next. Like I said, I have a little more time to kill before I get to the next property owner. But uh, eventually we're gonna look for lock number five here, which I'm hoping is right off of Long Lane, Long Road. We'll see. I don't know if we'll get a glimpse of it or not. You know, the one property owner was saying that they had to do some 
like there's a bridge near there that something may have happened to the lock we'll see all right and right here this is long lane this road is called right here is the canal actually that's the next farm we gotta go up to go up that driveway i think his driveway follows the towpath trail there right here is the canal and so earlier we were way we were up that way where we saw lock number two along the the rail trail but I'm not really seeing anything here for lock five yet. But as I turned around and looked on this side, seeing some familiar stone work over here. This looks oh my goodness, this I think this is lock five right here. This is this is the edge of it right here. Right here. So the bridge goes right over it. I guess you can see it's coming to shade there, but right there it is. That's the edge. Same as this stonework, stonework right here. I, I think, at least I think this is lock. Pretty sure this is lock five. But yeah, there's another look at it from this side of the guardrail. It's kind of odd. There you go. At least something's left of it here, a little bit at least. Yeah. So the road goes right over it, and then there's nothing left on that side of it over there. Just at least you know, babe. But at least something was preserved here. All right. Yeah, then looking back over here, there's just nothing on this side of it, though. None of the stonework was preserved over here. Then looking out that way, somewhere would be, up that somewhere would be lock four. I can't see anything from here. This is the canal right here. At least what's left of it. A little bit of stream flowing through of it. Alright, but we're going to head up. The lane here, because our canal goes up that way, right there's what's left of lock five, and we'll see we'll see what's up up this way when we talk to the next property owner. Alright, so I just got done talking with the landowner back there up, up at the other end of the lane. Making way making my way back down the lane. He's a cool guy. Just got a glimpse of lock number six back there too, right where I parked. It's in a bit rougher shape than some of the other ones we saw today, but you can see the wooden planks that made up the floor of it that helped to stop it from leaking the water leaking through the ground. So we'll get a look at that then. We'll also get a look at number five again. I'll go down, get like, try to get a eye level look at what's left number five up there. And I think he said I can walk up to number seven too. I think he knows the property owner doesn't think he'll mind if I go up there. So that works out great. Also, I keep hearing a uh, word about the pipe. He also mentioned there's a pipe too. The pipe that went from waterworks over the Lebanon. He said it's in the other field over here, somewhere you know, underground. So everybody keeps mentioning the pipe. So we're going to find a place where we can see this pipe. You know, if you know any information about that, where I can actually, you know, legally get a good view of the pipe, I'd like to do that at some point. Right, but just a little ways up here, you can see the road up there. We'll dip down and take a look at lock number five again quickly. All right, so down here is lock number five again. Get a better view of it. Some of the stone works. See how much? Okay. It extends all the way under the bridge, actually. Then beyond that, I guess it was in bad condition. Had to take it down, I guess. All right. There you go. What's left of lock number five? Still some stone work. And. On this side too and we actually get to walk through the lock a little bit here that's cool looks like they did some patchwork repair on that end but yeah first lock we've walked through in a while all right not sure yeah i guess looks like some sections are patched up a little bit like even over there but anyway that's cool here's here's lock number five a better look at it at least and up that way is our canal. Looks like just a little stream, but this is the canal then. And then the lane right here is the towpath trail, pretty much. And then on to our right down there is the canal. Just a tiny little stream flows through it now. Yeah, out there somewhere is the pipe <laughs> in that field over there. I, I really want to get a view of that pipe sometime. 
I'll have to try and do some more research on that. Everybody keeps talking about it, the pipe. All right. But once again here, we are following the Union, the Union Canal. It's been a little while since we've been actually able to follow it for a decent distance at all. So this will work. We actually follow it. We're actually, we're, you know, we're actually walking on the towpath trail and the, the canal, the remnants of it are next to us. And right over here is the canal. It doesn't look as canalish as some of the other locations we've been to, but you can still see the, the little dip the canal went through. And there's a little stream in there now. So just up ahead is his house. I don't want to. Really, I don't want to film his house. I want to kind of protect his privacy from him and his family. But hit lock number six is literally right next to his house. It's kind of cool. I told him I'm jealous of him because he has a lock right next to his house. So when I get up there. Um, I'll just try to film just the lock as much as I can. All right, so here then is lock number six. You can actually get down to it. You can see there's still some stone left. There's quite a bit missing on this one too, though. Kind of gushy through here. There we go. There's lock number six. We'll get a view from up that way too. Up that way is where I can see the wooden planks sticking out or on, on the bottom. Do you still see the rounded stone at the edge here? Still some stone left, but you see a lot of it's collapsed into and stuff like that. He's just walking along the top here. You see how it's kind of bowing out in some areas there. But still distinctively a lock though. You down in here, if you look down there, you can see some of the wooden planks. Let me zoom in. Let's see what shows up on camera there. You can see those are the wooden planks that line the bottom of a lock. Help just keep some of the water in here instead of it leaking down through the limestone. There's some down here too. That's pretty cool. That's the first time I've seen that. Alright. Alright, so that's pretty awesome. Let's walk up to this end yet. You can still see quite a bit of stonework at this end. This end is probably a little bit more complete than the other one. Actually, let's get down there. Yeah, it looks a lot better from this end. Let's drop down here. Oof. Yeah, cool. There's the entrance to lock number six. A little more stonework at this end. You got both rounded ends are still complete. All right. Lock number six. Get one more closer look at down through the lock. There you go. Alright. Alright, so we're gonna head back this way. Right here is the towpath trail. Because they told me, I was talking to Jason's neighbor there too. Oh, this is cool. It's been a while since we've been like on a rugged section where the, everything's all overgrown again. Reminds me of some of the earlier sections we did. Man, we've got Mushroom City right here. Look at this, it's loaded with mushrooms here. Not sure offhand what kind they are. But yeah, wow. I think they're growing off the root system of this dead tree. All right, oops. But this is the canal right here. The creek flowing through it. I feel like I should know the name of this creek, but And right there, once again, there's the there's the towpath. Get up here again. That's cool. Of course, this looks canalish back here too. I was talking with someone earlier today how uh, off on either side of the towpath, you would have the canal on one side and then another ditch on the other side that was like for drainage and just water control. I think that's what we're seeing there. Or we'll find out once we get up here to lock seven. All right, so I just peeked up through the brush and I see it through there. I can see the stonework for lock number seven. 
cool. Yeah, right there it is. Or at least what remains of it. I'm going to try to get down there earlier. Right there's the edge of it. You can see it up there. You can see some stones down and through here. Cool. Let's get up to the other end. I'm not sure if I can be able to get down this way, but let's go up here. See if we can see. I have a better view of it up here. I'm getting scolded by the Blue Jays. Yeah, you can see it down through there. All right, I'm gonna turn you off here. It's getting a little bit more overgrown. All right, so I've made it to the end. You can see the stonework over there. I'm kind of standing on the edge right here. It goes up, it goes up that way. Try to get down here. A little, very, very overgrown though, as you can tell. As you can still see some of the stonework. All right. I'd like to get down in there, but anyway. That's about the best view we're gonna get here. Still see some of the iron pins over there too, so there's still this could be cleaned up a little bit, but I'll try to get a I'll try to give you a few more glimpses of it as we walk back, but then right behind us is the towpath trail up there. Alright. Let me put you down there a little bit more you can see. Going up through there, lock number seven. And just keep catching little glimpses of it as we walk back. See some more of the stone work back in there. You know, it's overgrown, but at least it's here. You know, it hasn't been torn down or developed or things like that. So sometimes when they're out here in the middle of nowhere, it is actually helps to protect them too. Instead of the stone being stolen or like I said, just being plowed under or paved over or all those wonderful things. Just being in a remote area keeps them, protects them in a way, in its own way. Alright. Once again, there's looking back at what we can see of lock number seven. Going up through there. Cool. Alright, so I'm gonna start making my way back then through through all this brush. Back to where I left Naomi. And then we'll uh, we'll look at one more lock today. It's the one I showed in a previous video when I, when I was out out wandering about with my friend John was just off of Emma Road. Now it was, at the time I didn't know which one it was, but now I know it's lock number eight, and we can see that one from the road. So we're gonna just go quick, drive up there, pull over again, and take a look at that lock to include it officially in our series. And that'll be the last one we do in this, uh, in this episode. So let's uh, get on the road and get up there. Gotta get all this. I don't hear it first though. <laughs> All right, but before I forget, I should mention too, I was talking with Jason's neighbor who's like lived in this area for 40 years, like right, right next to his house. He mentioned that uh, where Jason's house is, there used to be like a dock there for the Union Canal and like a building. So he says there's all kinds of stuff buried in this area right here related to the Union Canal. So it'd be kind of cool to live <laughs> right next to the canal like that and have that kind of history. But anyway, like I said, let's get going up to Lock number 8. I'll quit yapping. But before we get to Emma Road, we got the chickens here at the farm. Hey guys, what do you think? You like living near the Union Canal? Okay, and we're on Emma Road right now. I believe right up here, this little bridge is where the canal comes across. I think it's where I pulled over a couple weeks ago. I was with John. And the lock number eight is right up in there. Yeah, then right there she is, lock number eight, just like I remember seeing her last time. Nice little view of her right there. Try to zoom in for a moment. I don't have permission to be on this property, so it's the closest we're going to get to lock number eight. But where we were earlier when we were filming seven and six, I was been up, backed up that way was the other farm I was at. And the canal comes up through here. And this is Emma Road right here. And this is where we're gonna stop this video, right here at Emma Road. But in the next segment, we're gonna continue on up that way. All right, but that'll be it then for this video. Had a fun day, met some cool landowners, got to talk some history with them and things like that. But I'm appreciative of those who do give me permission to come on their land and film these locks. At least what's left of them. All right, but uh, I think sometime soon I'll be filming the next episode. Got some news to talk about. We'll be taking a slight detour once we get to Union Waterworks up there, the branch canal that goes up to Pine Grove comes down that way. But we'll talk about that news in the next video. But as always, 
Thanks for coming along, and we'll see you on the next one.